If you look back at the beginning of cinema, there was a certain point where they would place a camera and they'd shoot a stage. And then somebody realized, well, wait, what if we take this camera outside? And when they took the camera outside, they started to shape the grammar of cinema. And I feel like where we are right now in terms of the advent of new technologies and the ability to shape collective narratives through social media, we're in that same place. We're just starting to understand how to use it to shape the great stories of the 21st century. I've been making films probably for about 17 years or so. What I loved about it was that ability to tell a story and to move somebody. Most of the work that I've done is kind of more on a dark side. It touches into horror, sometimes science fiction. When I look at where I am now, it's like a full 180. And I think a lot of that came out of the, the birth of my son. Seeing things through, you know, his actions and how he was interacting with the world, seeing how imaginative he was, it started to affect the way that I was actually making my work. The way I was designing stories, the way I was telling them, it was like, okay, I'm thinking about story in traditional ways. And now with the birth of my son, I'm looking at the world differently, but then also realizing, well, maybe I don't have to be confined by a three-act structure of a screenplay or commercial breaks when I would write for television or 120 pages for a script. You know, maybe I don't have to tell stories the same way that they've been told for the last, you know, 100 years within cinema. What's exciting to me is the fact that there aren't necessarily rules right now, and it creates this experimentation that's never been possible before. You know, I've started to borrow from a number of different areas, like I'm borrowing from design thinking, and I'm borrowing from programming and coding, and I'm borrowing from narrative design and storytelling, and from game mechanics. And one thing that's been interesting is it's not about perfection, right? It's about iterating. It's about putting it out there, seeing how people interact with it, being able to refine it and continue forward. And that's what I think is truly exciting about where we sit today. Recently, I decided that I was going to do a participatory trilogy of stories, that I was going to try to look at what storytelling was like in the 21st century, and I was going to experiment with that idea of how can I spark the imagination in those formerly known as the audience? How can I tell stories with them, or how can I help them to become better storytellers? The first project tells the story of a robot who is a scientist from another planet. She has come to Earth to explore and find out is there anything here that can help save her planet? But then also, is there anything that she can tell us that might help to save our planet? We worked with two fifth grade classes over a 10 day period. One group in Montreal, French speaking, the other group in LA, English speaking. And together they used math and science and geography to help the robot move across the country. Leica was a connected toy. So she would broadcast GPS coordinates and other types of data so then the kids could see that and effectively she would go to a different location based upon where the kids wanted her to go. So a team of photographers would travel Leica to those locations based upon what stories the kids were telling and how it tied into their curriculum. So if the kids were talking about alternative energy and solar power, we would take Leica out to a solar farm somewhere. So the students were able to see the robot making her way across North America. People think about new forms of storytelling and they think about it just being digitally based. We could have easily shot it against a green screen, but the fact that she was actually in the real world and the fact that they named her gave them some sense of ownership. So in 10 days, Leica traveled over 2,000 miles, went to 56 different locations, all driven by curriculum, all driven by the children's imaginations. All the stories, the artwork, and Leica herself will eventually be launched back into space. And when she goes up into space, you know, at night, you know, I have this vision of like these kids looking up into the night sky and realizing how far their imaginations can carry them. If you look back over thousands of years, the one thing that's had longevity is actually stories. Some of the greatest stories that exist were passed from one person to the next and different versions of them were created. And what's exciting about that is we're at a point in history right now where we're opening that up again. 
You know, we went through a spell where story was very much top down and it was very controlled. And now we're emerging into an age where we are free to kind of literally shake it up, take it outside, and totally change the confines of how it works.